Hey everyone, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short custom reel videos. Today's video, I'm going to talk about a, a question. I'm going to answer a question that I see a lot of people asking. I get a lot of people that actually reach out to me personally to ask me, and it's whether or not I prime custom parts before I start painting, before I start customizing, if I use primer. Um, the answer is honestly, it depends. I don't really use primer, um, but whether I start with a base coat or not really depends on what I'm going for. It depends on the custom. So I figured it would be good to shoot a quick video. I, I have done another video here on my channel about all kind of like my painting tips, but this one I'm going to talk specifically about base coats, what I do, when I do it, and so forth. Okay. So number one, I don't technically use primer or i don't use only primer i never just get actual spray primer and start with that as a base coat i've done that in the past um, and i've tried a few different primers from different companies and i've never i've never gotten results i was happy with just starting with that usually gray coat of base primer. Um, a lot of them I've found to be tacky. I've just not found them to be necessary, to be honest with you. So I never start with just a base coat of straight like gray primer alone. Now, I do often start with a base coat. In 95% of the time, that base coat is black. And this is what I use. So this is Krylon color master with color max technology now here's the reality this is paint and primer in one so when i say i don't use primer that's not 100 percent true that's why i said i don't use only primer i have found this to be my go-to solution when i need to have a base coat of color on the figure now i get this at like hobby lobby you can buy it on amazon there's a bunch of different places you can buy this i've tried some different blacks in the past this happens to be the one that i prefer um, it's just a flat black that's the color i get krylon color master flat black so when do i do this well Obviously, if I'm using any third-party 3D printed parts, those come, you know, unpainted. Those come as just resin. So I always want to start with a base coat on those. Most of the time, that base coat is black. I will tell you what the exception of that rule is shortly, but most of the time, 95%, I'm starting with a base coat of black so I can paint over that, right? The other time that I do this is if I'm working with Mythic Legion's body parts that you know i'm going to paint sometimes i just paint right on top of the body parts but sometimes i actually do base them out in a base color and there's two reasons i do that one is if i'm working with disparate colored parts right so say that just for the sake of argument say that i'm putting together uh you know a character and i want it to be a green orc and i'm, I'm putting it together and i'm cobbling it together from pieces that are in my fodder bin and I've got, say, a red chest from a Fury Clan orc and a blue arm from a Kronoa. And I've got some lower legs that are from a Barbarian, so they're flesh colored. I've got all those different colors. I want them all to eventually be green, right? Um, and yes, I know I could just start with green parts, but say I don't have any green parts and I have all those parts in my fodder bin. And I'm like, hey, I want to start there. I want to make use of these. When I paint, what i find is the way that i put paint on especially because i do a lot of dry brushing the base color underneath what i'm painting will influence the color i put over it because some of that color bleeds through you can use that in your paint work right well if i've got a red chest a blue arm and you know caucasian flesh colored legs the base colors are all different so the result of dry brushing that green over it it's going to be inconsistent so in that case I would take all those parts and base them out in the black. That way, when I dry brush over them or when I paint over them, any color that bleeds through is consistent across all of them. Cool? Fair enough? Um, number two, another reason that I would base out in black is, again, say that I'm doing something and I'm changing it from a color like blue, like a chrono blue, to a green orc right? I know that I might get a little bit of paint rub. Well, the nice thing about spray painting a base coat is it goes on generally very, very thin. So 
that little bit of clearance that you have in the arms, in the joints, that little bit of clearance with a base coat of black spray paint, it's less likely to rub than the paint that you're going to brush on. So in a case, and I'll show you an example here, this figure here that we're looking at, this is my orc cleric. And I did this, an ex example I just used, I used it for a reason. Um, that chest and that arm, those originally started out as chronal blue colored figures. So I painted them black to start with for a few reasons. The head that I used was a 3D print. It was a, you know, something that was 3D printed. So it came to me in just like a flat gray color. So the both reasons I just mentioned apply here. I wanted a consistent base coat across the arm, the chest, and the head I was going to paint. So when I lay that green on top, it was consistent. But additionally, because I was changing that uh, flesh color, especially that joint piece there, from blue to green, if there was going to be any paint rub, I didn't want the blue to shine through. I'd rather a little bit of black shine through. So those are some of the reasons why I would base something out in black to begin with, because I want everything to match, or because if there is a slight amount of rub, I want the black to shine through those joints and not that base color. Let me show you another example. One figure that whenever I do paint on it, I always base it out is the Hagnon figure. So here's two different Hagnon customs that I've done. On the left, we have my undead Templar, and on the right, we have what I call my ghost on the shore. Interestingly, both of these started as Hagnon figures, and I painted different body parts. So for the Templar, that obviously uses the chest and the armor pieces from a Templar knight, but all of the limbs, the head, the arm, upper arms, upper legs, those were all Hagnon parts, and they originally were that clear, transparent type uh you know, plastic, that doesn't take brush paint wonderfully well. So by starting with a nice base coat, it gave me something better to adhere to. And I painted it with those kind of fleshy-like colors to make it look less like bones and more like zombie-like decaying flesh. Now, on the left, on the right, I should say, the ghost on the shore, I want to do the exact opposite. Hagnon is totally a transparent figure in that, that clear plastic. I wanted to rethink it as a ghost that had inhabited some armor. So I imagine that the armor itself had it become ghostly, but all of the parts that would have been flesh that are now a ghost, that I wanted to remain transparent. So that particular figure was totally a Hagnon. I pulled them apart and I painted all of the armor pieces that you see painted here with a base coat of black. And then I did a bunch of different colors dry brushing to create almost the, the leather-like looking armor, kind of the walrus hide looking armor is what I was going for that you see here. So that's a Another reason that I would base something out is if whatever material I'm using isn't going to take paint wonderfully well with a brush, having that base coat will allow it to, you know, adhere a little bit better. And that's where having the primer, I think, in that paint actually does help. Now, I said I most of the time use that black. There are some rare exceptions to that. And I'm gonna show you a couple of those now. Um, my popular Kitsune fox heads. When I paint those, I don't always do them in black. And there's a very specific reason. These are some examples here. So on the left, we have my classic orange Kitsunes. And on the right, I have my white Kitsune, which was kind of a, a tribute to the G.I. Joe character of Zartan. But outside of the black face paint, he's you know got white fur. Um, what I found was, when I really want a solid base color like this, basing it out in black and then brushing the color on top of it didn't make a whole lot of sense. So in this particular case, I started those orange Kitsune off with an orange base coat and I start the white one off with a white base coat. So let me show you here. Um, this is the white that I use and it's from the same brand. It's Krylon Color Max. This is flat white. For the orange, I actually use this, which is Design Master Orange. This is one that I get at Michael's Crafts. There are some other places that carry it too. Um, but I have found that if I want, and I use the white for any character that is going to have a white 
base. Um, when I do my Badger customs, that starts as white. When I do my Vampire uh, Kitsune, when I do my White Rabbits, they all start with this. So I base it out in white. And it works really well because I want the figure to be white already. Using that base coat is much more efficient than basing it out in black and then laying the paint on top. Similarly, the orange Kitsune, starting with that orange base coat, gives me a much, much smoother application, much easier paint job to put on that part. So 95% of the time I'm starting with black, especially when I'm using lots of disparate parts that I want to bring together with one similar base coat, one identical, I should say, base coat um, on all of them. But there are instances where I do use other base colors if what I'm going for is not black or doesn't make sense for me to, to paint on top of that black there. Now, there are other instances um, that I'll show you here because um, I mentioned that, you know, there are times where I don't base at all. So a lot of the customs that I do use existing Mythic Legions figures, and I don't want to spray a base coat on top of them because I really want to utilize the colors that are already there on the Mythic Legions figure. Let me show you an example of that. One of my favorite things to do is to paint characters that have a lot of wear to them, um, whether it's rust or scuffing and dirt, whether it's like you see here, some like oxidation and rust, I love that type of look. So this was a character that I did as part of my Mythic Shogun series. And it was meant to kind of be a clockwork like automaton um, that I imagined as, you know, something that some crazy inventor created as maybe a guardian, um, almost like a Wizard of Oz Tin Man that has been lying unused and undisturbed for quite some years and someone awoke him. And now he's, you know, ready to serve a new master, but he's a little worse for the wear. So this started as a Steel Knight Legion builder. That samurai armor that he's wearing is from an articulated icons uh, uh, feudal series figure. Um, I did a whole series actually about the uh, articulated icons figures from the Fwoosh and how you can use that samurai armor on Mythic Legion. So you can check that out as well if you're interested. But for the purposes of this video, what I'm trying to show here is the armor that you can see, both the samurai armor itself, the, the Lord of the Rings skirt piece that I added, um, but then the rest of his armor, the head and the shoulder pads there, I didn't base those out in anything. I just laid different paints on top of what was already there for Mythic Legions. So that's why at the start when I said, do I you know, start with you know, a base coat of paint? It depends on the project. In this particular case, I really want to use the colors that already exist. That's, I think, a big, big part of customizing. And it's something we, we tend to get away from sometimes because we can repaint an entire figure, right? Um, often we, we take that route, but I've always believed in the path of least resistance or in being a lazy boy customizer, right? Being an LBC, as some of my good friends like to jokingly call me. Um, it's not an insult. I love being a lazy boy customizer. I love coming up with recipes that smartly use pieces that already exist. Um, it's why I always say that I search for recipes and I search for parts that are as close to where I want them to be as possible. The less work you do on a custom, especially a Mythic Legions custom, one of the things I love about my Mythic Legions customs and the way that I approach them is I like them to integrate really, really well with existing Mythic Legions figures. So when you see them in the case, if you see one of my customs alongside a factory produced figure, they shouldn't look like night and day. They should very much blend and look like parts of the same whole. That is absolutely a principle that I strive for. One of the ways to achieve that is to do less. The less you add to it, the less you have to customize and change, the more it's going to look like a Mythic Legions figure because it started that way, right? So this Samurai Automaton is an example of that. By starting with the silvers of the armor that already existed and just laying some paints on, on top of that, some paint effects, I get something that I think looks really cool, but still fits within Mythic Legions. So that's another thing that I would say. 
look at what you're painting. Can you use the base colors that are already there and just add to it? Or do you need to start fresh? Sometimes you do. This last one that I'll show you, I had no choice in starting fresh because of the kind of customs I was going for. And these are my gargoyles. So these gargoyle customs are ones, these, the one all the way to the left is the original gargoyle custom I did years ago for um, the G-Con uh, broadcast. And the other two are ones I've done more recently using some custom heads that were sold through wolfkingcustoms.com. All of these customs, I was going for that stone gargoyle look. So I not only need all the body pots to be consistent, but I also need them all to be black for the type of dry brushing effect I'm going for. Now, that gargoyle all the way to the left, the original one, that started out as a Torian body. So the body parts itself were black, but the armor was not. The armor was all different colors. That head is from a Masters of the Universe whiplash figure. So that started out green. The wings are from a Masters of the Universe Lord Dactus. So they started out like a bluish gray. The figure in the middle, right? That started out as a variety of different figures. The, you know, the limbs were from a Torian, so they were black, but the chest armor and the, you know, the, the loin piece and stuff, those were all from different figures. They were different color armor. The figure all the way to the right, that short squat type gargoyle, started out as a hellfire demon. So he was, you know, his skin colors were reddish taking all those pieces together and basing everything out in black allowed me to dry brush these different shades of gray on to get this stone-like effect, but also to get that consistent look across the entire figure because the entire figure started as one color. It started as that black color. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, should you start with primer? Again, I like primer and paint together. I like starting with a more solid base coat. I find, at least for my customizing techniques, that it works a lot better. But you don't always need to start with a base coat. If you really think about recipes and you look at different parts, you may be able to find some cool examples where you don't have to paint on top of, you know, the figure to get started. Um, you can paint right on top of Mythic Legion's figures. They don't need a coat of primer for the paint to adhere. I think that's one of the questions a lot of people have. If I put paint on top, is it going to maintain or is it just going to flake off? The joints might flake off. You can check out my other video about how I treat painting joints. Um, but the rest of the body itself, the paint will absolutely adhere to it. You don't have to feel like you need to start with a base coat. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, the last thing I will point out, because again, I get asked this a lot. Um, I do seal the figures when I'm done. This tester's spray liqueur, um, I, always, I always say the wrong word, spray lacquer. This tester's spray lacquer, this is the one that I use. It's a, it's a flat color. It's called a dull coat. So D-U-L-C-O-T-E, that's what I use. Just give it a light spray on top. It will further protect that paint that you put on top, whether you base it out first, lay coat on paint on top of it, or whether you're just adding kind of like rust effects or whatever, that will absolutely help protect it. Um, if you enjoy videos like this one, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, Hit me up in the comments. Uh, certainly, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so so you are notified when videos like this go live. Until next time, I can't wait to see what you make.